My name is Nikki. I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Skye in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. We thought we would do something different this morning. We thought we would give you a tour of somebody else's garden. So the other day I was out for a walk with Elizabeth and the girls and we got invited into Antonello's beautiful garden here in Montepetuso. I wasn't filming that day so I couldn't show you anything but I bumped into him the other day and I asked him if we could come back and do a video tour and he said yes. He has got a stunning garden up there somewhere and it's near the hole in Montepetuso. Um, just bear in mind these are private gardens so it's not somewhere that you can buy tickets and go and do a tour. He's a friend of Carlo's and he's kindly invited us to come and take a look around his vegetable garden. Carlo has just pointed out this plant here. This is a kiwi plant. There's one down there, There's another one hidden away in there. That is where we are going. Even here in the center of the village, there are gardens cultivated within an inch of their life, full of vegetables and fruit. This is a, it's a beautiful plum tree here. And you can see some corn down there, tomatoes, all sorts of things. Just want to point out that this wheelbarrow here is connected, I don't think you can see it, to a steel cable <laughs> to go up there to be lifted up and down. Un giorno farò una cosa così per portarti a casa. Ah, sì. <laughs> Ti metto in una carriola, mettiamo un cavo e <laughs> There are loads and loads of hazelnut trees here. And all the nuts just fall down onto the path. Wow. Tu lo sapevi? Sì. All these mysterious, overgrown, abandoned properties. This behind me is another kiwi fruit vine and this one has got much more fruit on it. I don't think anybody picks it from here. Let's see if they're ripe. Well, they're pretty hard still, but, well, there's a double one there. Oh. <laughs> Siamese twin kiwi fruits. Solo uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque insieme. Wow. Permesso. So here we have more kiwis with chickens <laughs> <laughs> and Antonella has just told us that they're actually ready to eat in November so they've got quite a lot of ripening to do. So Antonella has just explained to me that to get the kiwi fruits you need one male plant and two fem female plants. <laughs> This behind me is a big plant that has actually had, it's a male plant that has had the female plant grafted onto it. And that works too. So this plant is full of fruits that will be ready in a couple of months time. So this is exactly where the plant has been grafted together. Really interesting. Bye bye. Okay, so potatoes. This is how he keeps his potatoes stored in a cool dark room. And these will last for a good six months or so. Ours actually last till about January, February, but he's saying sort of like December, Christmas time. And as long as they're in a cool, dark space and they've got no light, they won't sprout or anything and they'll be good to go for a few months. Facciamo vedere che quelli di Antonello sono più grandi. No, yeah. Carlo's saying that his, his, his onions are bigger than ours, which is true. And they're also plaited slightly differently from the way Luca does it. Luca makes more of a bunch. Where these are like Adesso Luca mi ammazza perché ho detto questa cosa. <laughs> right, let's get out into the gardens. I love the fact that he's just got all the flowers mixed up with the plants. Just brought it into shows this tomato, I think. Ah, but it's almost all the years. 
Well, well I think this is the nearest you're going to get to Carla well, during the American well, Beauty with well, tomatoes. Well, <laughs> Wow. Antonello also makes his own wine. I'll show you the press afterwards. Here's some of his beautiful grapes. Not quite ready yet, but he has said that I can come along and help with the grape harvest. Yellow peppers. Red peppers. You ready for the view? So we have this fantastic view of Monte Peduso and the surrounding countryside and up to the hole. Carlo has found a pear tree. Wow, wow. big pears. Così si mettono le piante. Le pere deve raccogliere da terra, non come mio padre mi ha messo l'albero che deve andare a 10 metri. Guarda quest'uva, quanto è bella. Guarda così si fa qua. Si prende la pruna e si mangia. These are red plums or dark plums. Vuoi provare? No, è già sano là. Paola? Mmm, that's perfect. È una pruna perfetta. No, not for you. Queste sono ancora meglio. Queste sono più dolci, sono mm. più piccole e dolci. Prova, prova. Sono duri? Sì, è buono, è buono, no. Questa è pruna ciliegina. Ah. È più dolce quella. Adesso sì. prova anche quella. No, è una buona. Look at all the hazelnuts on the floor as we're walking up the steps. Sì, sì. This tomato plant here has climbed and climbed and climbed and it has wrapped itself around the apricot tree. So you can pick tomatoes in an apricot tree. Everything is very natural here, so we still have ants and spider webs attached to everything. Hey. This was a whole zucchini garden here, and it is next to a rather large fig tree. Facciamo scoprire alle persone come si capisce come la figa è giusta. Allora, questo ovviamente non vanno bene. Questa va quasi bene, ma è un po' dura. Questa si sente al tatto, vedi? È, è morbida, affonda. Qualche volta caccia anche una goccia di miele qua, a seconda del tipo di figo. Comunque questa è perfetta da mangiare. Si strappa. Quando la strappi, vedi? Sì. Se proviamo a strappare questa, guarda che succede. Questa viene tutta intera eh. e caccia questa goccia di latte. Di latte ah. E quindi no, non va bene per niente. Adesso me la mangio pure. Perché... L'ho raccolta, che faccio? Me la porto a casa, me la mangio. Giusto, Antonè? <ride> ecco qua. Ognuno può mangiarlo come vuole. Io per sporcarmi di meno faccio così. Apro la buccia, prendo il fico. Taccalo! Oh, mm -hmm. Like that monkey mm -hmm. on your t-shirt. Mm -hmm. okay. Facciamo vedere questa volta, prima che la fichi in bocca. <ride> È rosso come deve essere. Ok. Che questa è una fica rossa. Poi ci stanno anche le, i fichi bianchi. Ma posso right. mangiare? Oh, so if I... <laughs> Luca doesn't oh, no. have these. These are stripy eggplants. This plant here is very important for the garden. This is a willow. It's not a weeping willow. It's a different type of willow. Um, in the olden days, before string was invented, this is what they would use. They, in November, they would cut these long windy branches and they would use them as string to tie up the grapevines and to tie plants onto um, posts so that they grew upwards. There's another bigger tree right up there. Ah. 
We're going to go to the grapevines now and he's going to show us how he uses the willow to attach all the vines onto the posts, pillars, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so he still uses this practice of using the willow and once they are tied on, they do not move. Let's go down, see what's in the next level. Note the recycling of the old bed frames. It's <laughs> 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 okay. In Italy, people grow, well, I don't, know if is, I don't know if they do this in other places, but people grow their pumpkins in baskets so that they don't get too heavy because if they get too heavy, they could quite easily just break and fall off the vine. So the basket is put under them and pretty much nailed into the wall so that the weight is taken off the vine. These are the winter vegetables already in. We've got broccoli, cabbage, uh, cauliflower, fennel, um, leafy greens, maybe some kale already in ours don't go in for a while yet and once the squashes and tomatoes are finished he will plant them all the way along there too right down to the end now over here he has a very special tree these two trees are very special this one is a male and this one is a female and they are male and female pistachios. Carlo and I have never seen a pistachio tree before, so this is a new one for us. So generally people who have any land here at all tend to cultivate it for fruit and vegetables to eat. It's very rare that you get a garden that is purely decorative. In fact, when we moved into our house, I asked Carlo's dad if I could have the little piece of garden where we now have the paving. I asked if I could have that as a grassy area with flowers. And he looked at me and he said, but you cannot eat grass why you want that. He didn't really get the point of having a pretty area to sit in when you could produce food for your family. So this is a very, very strong culture here. And I know that during the war, a lot of people that lived here um, really didn't have much food. So any spare ground or, or area that they had outside, they would grow what they could to provide for themselves. Now we know that you're all fed up with tomatoes, but look how many tomatoes he's got. They go all the way down to the end there. Rather narrow steps here. Down to the grapevines we go. So if you saw my video a few weeks ago when I went to Tramonti with Elizabeth and Mariana, you will remember that the grapevines were built in the same way so that they go over these pergolas, which frees up the space down below. In the olden days, they would grow potatoes and beans and all sorts of things, not tomatoes because they need more sun, but they'd grow underneath the grapevines, therefore utilizing the space below the vines and have more space to grow in. What was important for them was not the quality of the wine, like today, but the quantity. They just wanted to produce as much wine as possible because back in those days, they drank wine all the time. It was much lighter than wine. It was... <laughs> it was much lighter than the wine today. And they would drink it in the morning, at lunchtime, in the evening and it was just a standard drink. So they wanted to produce as much wine as they could and they didn't really care about the quality of it. They would have it with their sandwiches at lunchtime. They would carry on working throughout the day. And obviously it was much lighter than the wine that we get, otherwise they'd be too drunk to work. The wine was of a very low alcohol quantity and there was an old saying back in those days that drinking wine at lunchtime would help you plough the fields in the afternoon. So they would happily drink it all day long and it would help them work in the afternoon. This willow string has been here for at least three years. It will not budge. It's very, very strong. Well, what I want to do is add a piranha, so okay? down here. Now the worrying thing is that Antonello and Luca's generation, let's say 50 to 60 years old, 
might be the last generation that look after their gardens so well because a lot of the younger generation are not interested in doing their own gardens. There's not many people that are following in their father's footsteps and um, getting passionate about this. And this is one of the reasons why I want to show you this because I'm hoping to sort of inspire more people to plant things and grow their own fruits and vegetables if they can because it's just such an amazing thing to be able to do, to be able to eat off your own land you know where your foods come from, you've grown it yourself, you know what's on it, you know whether there's pesticides or anything on it. And it's just such a great feeling to be able to eat this fresh produce that you have grown with your own hands. It'd be such a shame to lose it and rely on the big supermarket chains, wouldn't it? To say, I am quite looking forward to coming back here in October and helping with the grape harvest. I haven't done that since 1999 when I first came here. Qual è la differenza tra questo tipo uh, di sistemazione dell'uva e quello precedente? Se ti giri puoi far vedere quello di prima. Ok, quella è una pergola e questo è un filare. La differenza tra queste due cose è che lì potresti mettere le verdure e qua no, perché qua ci devi passare. Ok? Però così l'uva funziona meglio, prende molto più sole, quindi si matura più velocemente e quindi la qualità dell'uva è migliore. Quel tipo di pergola l'ha fatto il papà Carmine, il papà di Antonello Carmine. Questa qua l'ha fatta Antonello. È un lavoro di Antonello. These are Alianico grapes. You might have heard of Alianico wine. It's a very popular local wine here in Campania. It's a really strong wine. Yeah, it's very strong. It's about 14%. These grapes here are Montepulciano grapes, but this is not original the vine. The Montepulciano vine has actually been grafted onto a different vine which grows better in this soil. Obviously Monte, Montepulciano is in Tuscany, so it's a different soil, different climate there, and the vine might not grow as well. So Antonella has actually grafted the vine onto a local vine down at the bottom here. We've got some willow branches here. These ones haven't been used and they've gone hard now. So obviously after a while they go dry and crack. So these ones will be used to light fires with. Let's go and see how he makes the wine. We're going to come back when it's grape harvesting time, but basically the quick process of what they do, just a quick talk through of it, is that this big barrel here is for the red wine and there's ones up there for the white wine. They bring them down here, they're cleaned and the grapes are put, the grapes are first put through the machine that takes all the grapes off the stalks that's over there and then they are left in the barrels for seven days and every day Antonello comes and he mixes up the grapes again so that they ferment well. After seven days they are put in the Happy grape squashing machine and, and as Antonello showed he works this machine, I don't know how to do that, and the juice starts coming out. Then this pump which is a food grade pump so this is made on purpose for food products, this pump pumps the wine down into the basement where it is eventually bottled and we're going to go down there now. The pump comes along the floor, out the door, down the steps. Now we know why it's such a big long pump. All the way down. <laughs> All the way down. down into this scary basement. Oh, it's a real wine basement. Look at that. Arrivato giù il vino, sì. vengono messi in queste botte d'acciaio. Questa più grande è 600 di rosso sì. e quella là bianco è 300. Vengono messe là dentro con il coperchio sopra. Ok. Fa restare un'altra settimana là dentro e qua su queste botti c'è un coperchio di acciaio. Dopo un'altra settimana che si riposa, c'è un altro tappo, questo tappo qua.
che va dentro il vino. Sì. Capito? Dentro. Sì. Così. E poi si ci mette per chiudere ermeticamente un olio di vasellina. Ah. Olio minerale. Vedi? Bene l'olio. Così. Questo qua. Ah. Sopra. Così, sopra il vino. Sì. Che pure se esce l'aria, esce e però è sempre chiuso, con un peso sopra. Ok. E poi sopra quell'altra botte porto un altro tappo. Ah. Quest, il vino rimane là fino a febbraio, marzo. Lo prendi sempre da sotto. Scendendo il vino, il, la quota del vino, quando farà più caldo lo dobbiamo levare e lo dobbiamo mettere nelle damigiane. Ok. Sempre con un po' di olio sopra. Con questo coso qua si pesca l'olio da sopra. Ah, proprio così? E, sì, e che va qua dentro. E poi tu metti la bomba nella damigiana e riempi i cosi di 5 litri, capito? Sì, e in tutto tu produci quanti litri di vino? 8-900 litri. Wow. Poi ce n'è rimasta 50 rosso e 50 bianco. So. E poi così davo scendere da Mocianella, piglia di. Oh, scena di. <laughs> ok. Antonello is one of very, very few people in Positano that make their own wine. There's hardly anybody that has enough grapevines in town to make their own wine. Uh, in fact, our neighbour makes wine, but he gets the grapes from elsewhere. So this is a tradition that is slowly, slowly dying out here, which is a shame. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed that tour of Antonello's garden. I found it absolutely fascinating and I love his views. I have actually based... Um, some of the scenes in my book that I'm writing in his garden, except I've turned it into a lemon garden. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.